Some of you probably clicked on this video thinking, who could make an entire video about keyboard shininess? But then you thought, well, I've got a MacBook and isn't it really annoying how the matte finish on the keyboards after like a year or so get really, really shiny, especially in specific areas? So what gives? Well, it turns out there is a way to prevent or at least significantly slow down the process of your MacBook keyboards getting progressively more shiny over time that can help keep your MacBook looking like new and potentially increase its resale value. Let me explain. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I wanna to help you travel smarter by answering a question some of you had on an older video I made about MacBooks on how to keep your MacBook keys from getting shiny. I've made a few videos about good keyboard maintenance, which if you have any laptop, Apple or not, you should watch because it could help save your screen. You may have noticed in those videos that some of the keys, after several years, still had more of their matte finish than what you might expect on a typical MacBook Pro. Well, here's how you can save your MacBook keys as well, if it's not already too late. The reason this familiar gloss happens, and happens relatively quickly compared to some other laptops, is that Apple uses ABS plastic for its keys. ABS stands for this word, which I won't attempt to pronounce, and this type of plastic, when compared to others used for keyboard caps, has some advantages. It's durable, meaning it can take a pounding like you typing away furiously at your keys for days, months, and years on end. It's also cost-effective, meaning it's less expensive than the alternatives. But this, and this is key, is that ABS keys can be made thinner than other types of plastic that may be used for keyboard caps. For example, there's also PVT, PC, and silicone, but for MacBooks, Apple uses ABS because it can be made thinner, and MacBooks of all model are designed to have the absolute minimal space between the keys and the screen when the laptop lid is closed, so even if that ABS plastic comes with the drawback of getting shinier over time more quickly than other types of plastic, Apple has prioritized keeping things as thin and as minimal as possible. Now what causes the shiny keys, which is more noticeable and faster than keyboards made with other types of plastic, come from a few factors. The first is physical. The matte finish of the keys wears down over time from being typed on, and since the matte finishing is particularly fine and as thin as possible, this can happen more quickly. You'll notice it more on the keys and the parts of the spacebar you tend to use most, because that's where the most typing and most frequent impact is happening. It's hard to prevent that physical wear because obviously you're gonna be using your keyboard and typing on it. So unless you're using an external keyboard, the shininess over time is just gonna be inevitable. But there's a second cause of that keyboard shininess that you have a lot more control over. So let's talk again about finger grease. Our fingers and hands are producing oil and sweat all day. They're also really good at picking up dirt. All things that can accumulate on your keys and make them shinier over time. So try, if you can, before each time you sit down at your MacBook to wash your hands first. This will help remove excess finger oils and dirt. As the day goes on, and depending on the temperatures, your hands will get greasier and potentially sweatier, but by making it a habit to wash your hands before you get on your laptop each time, it will reduce how much grease there is to transfer to your keyboard. The next piece of advice is to never eat around or over your keyboard. Crumbs and other random food can get between your keys, but also in between your fingers and the keys themselves. And this will add more friction and abrasion from the force of your typing. Your fingers are relatively soft, but put a sesame seed or a breadcrumb in there that's been dried and a little bit hard over time and start typing on the keyboard with it. And it adds a little bit more scratchiness and abrasion and a little bit more physical force that you're adding to the keys. Obviously this is cumulative, so if you eat over your keyboard once or twice, it's probably not gonna make any noticeable difference, but avoiding eating over your keyboard or around your keyboard on your MacBook is gonna really reduce the amount of gloss that it accumulates over time. Not to mention when you're eating, all the oils and stuff from your food gets on your hands and then will get onto your keyboard. Wiping with a napkin won't help much either since it doesn't remove grease. For that, you have to wash your hands with soap. So just remember, don't eat over your keyboard, which is gonna help reduce all of these problems from happening in the first place. Also, ABS plastic is particularly sensitive to heat and UV light. 
Typing outdoors and under the sun especially can slowly degrade the plastic, which you'll begin to notice as shine over time. When possible, try to avoid using your MacBook in extremely hot conditions or outdoors in direct sunlight. I'd also recommend when your MacBook gets especially hot, like after rendering a large video file or anything that causes the fans to kick on or the palm rest to get noticeably warm, wait before closing the laptop lid if possible until it cools down. Another way to prevent cross-contamination is your phone. No, not the screen of your phone itself, but chances are your phone is probably pretty dirty. When's the last time you cleaned yours? Our phones have hand grease, ear grease, food, and all kinds of accumulated gunk on them, so when you're using your laptop, try to minimize how often you pick up your phone. And that's to prevent all the grease and dirt from here from getting transferred from your phone to your laptop keys which can be really difficult because on average, we touch our phones 2,600 times a day. So consider it good hygiene, just from a keyboard standpoint of view, but also a little bit of training your mind to sort of detox and get a little less addicted to this. And lastly, you should clean your keyboard keys ideally once a week. Here's my routine. I'll do everything usually on Mondays just for consistency. I'll unplug it for battery health as well, and I'll use the opportunity when the battery gets low to use some eye clear and spray a microfiber cloth I use only to clean my keyboard, trackpad, and palm rests. You can also shut down your MacBook to not inadvertently, you know, activate the keys or change the screen brightness, just makes things a little bit easier. So what you want to do is spray one side of the microfiber cloth once or twice, then wipe it down once or twice. Make sure that you get the trackpad and the palm rest and all the keys. You don't need to push down too hard. In fact, you should be quite gentle. And then flip over the microfiber cloth on the dry side and then wipe it down one more time and then let it sit for about five to 10 minutes while everything completely dries. And that's it. That's basically all you have to do for your regular weekly MacBook Pro keyboard cleaning. Using a cleaning product like iClear, which a lot of Apple stores around the world use to keep their display models clean, can help reduce the amount of grease that accumulates on your keys and potentially slow down the amount of shine that it gets over time. MacBook key shininess isn't completely preventable, but you can slow it down and now you know how. And if it's something that you're really worried about, you really want to reduce the amount of keyboard shine you get, you can, like I mentioned, put a thick plastic cover over the keys when your laptop lid is open and you're typing on it. That will help reduce the amount of grease and dirt that gets on your keys, but it won't stop the physical impact. It will reduce it, but it won't stop it. So eventually over time, chances are, if you have the keys and the keyboard and the MacBook long enough, those keys, whether they're protected with a plastic cover or not, are gonna get shinier. And finger grease is not only bad for the keys themselves because they'll get shinier, but it can also reduce the life of your MacBook and damage its screen. I'll leave a link to my video about that down in the description, which explains what you should do before you close your laptop lid screen every single time. And I'll also add a link to the iClear solution and the microfiber cloth I use down in the description. But hopefully this video will prevent your keys from getting shinier over time. And if you have your own solutions, let me know down in the comment section. And I did mention something about battery health and keeping the battery of my MacBook healthy and all my MacBooks healthy. If you're curious about that, let me know in the comments as well. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.